Let me start the call. All right. We got everybody here and welcome to a very special edition of Sports Basements Outside In tonight with uh, sponsored by Merrill. My name is Austin Auger. Um, and as you are, I'm sure you're well aware, we have the ever inspiring Mirna, the Mirnovator, Valerio. Uh, she is an educator, she's a runner, she's a coach, she's an opera singer, is that correct? Yes. Yes. Lapsed, <laughs> a lapsed opera singer. <laughs> um, a woman of the of many talents um, also an author forgot to mention that part um, star of films as well and uh, we'll get into all of that um, as well as any of your questions as we go along if you do have any questions by all means um, please put them in the uh, uh, chat bar on the side um, we'll be sure that we get to them um, at the end we'll have a little Q&A session we'll also allow you guys to um, unmute yourself and ask me or yourself. Um, if you're feeling a little bit shy, um, that's perfectly fine. You want to get your question answered, just put it in the chat bar. We'll make sure we get to it, um, get to as many as possible. Um, before we get started, um, as you may be aware um, from our other outside in events, we have a nonprofit beneficiary. Um, and for October, our nonprofit beneficiary is Outdoor Afro. Um, Outdoor Afro has become the nation's leading cutting edge network that celebrates and inspires black connections and leadership in nature. Additionally, um, Outdoor Afro is at the forefront of helping more people, particularly black people, equitably reconnect with the natural world through outdoor recreation. Um, they will be, again, as I mentioned, they'll be our beneficiary all through the month of, uh, month of October. Um, so we have one, two, three more outside in events coming up uh, next week, the 22nd and the 29th. Um, and they will be our beneficiary for that. We have, for this event in particular, we raised over $150 for Outdoor Afro. So um, that's excellent. 100% um, of those funds go to them. So, you know, um, we're getting some good entertainment here. We're getting some great inspiration from the Mirnovator and we are helping a great cause. Um, now that I said at my spiel, we'll get, uh, we'll get into Mirna here. How are you doing this evening, Mirna? Oh, looks like you're muted. That's my bad. Hold on one second here. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're good now. My, my apologies. You, you got all the, all the functions that you can do it. So I know I talk too much. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm good. I am great, actually. Uh, I am right now. I'm in Maine. Um, I don't live in Maine, but I am in a a real uh, bed and breakfast, um, you know, not to my nasty house <laughs> that probably hasn't been cleaned. Um, I am, um, and I'm on like sort of a, a, a junket uh, doing lots of adventures and eating good food this weekend and, you know, getting to hike and, and ride my bike and, you know, show all of it on Instagram. So for money. <laughs> so, so, not, a bad, not a bad life right there. No, no. Yeah. Like, and it's, it's, so I, I'm really great. I've been working nonstop throughout the pandemic and, uh, and I'm so grateful to have work and uh, I'm so grateful to just have movement and, and be in a beautiful place. I live in Vermont and um, I moved there about just under two years ago. And it is, was the, one of the single most um, awesome ex um, decisions I've ever made. So uh, yeah, yeah, life is good. I can keep going on, but you know, I know you have other questions. <laughs> <laughs> we have plenty of questions, but you know what? We are here to hear uh, you talk. So, uh, by you know, by all means, if you if you get get on, um, you know, feel spirited by a question or by an answer, you just take it and run with it, Mira. That's uh, that's what we're here to see. So, um, so you mentioned now that you live in Vermont. Um, so, uh, I believe I read that you uh, grew up in Brooklyn. Is that correct? Brooklyn, New York. Yes, uh, not Brooklyn, Maryland, or Brooklyn, <laughs> Ohio. Um, not that there's anything wrong with any of those places, but, <laughs> um, so I, I was born and raised in Brooklyn. I am, uh, but I haven't lived there for a while. My family's still there. So I will always have somewhere to go because they're never going to leave Brooklyn ever. Um, and, um, but I've, you know, I've lived up and down the, the Eastern seaboard. So as I said, I currently live in Vermont, but, um, I've lived in Maryland. I've lived in Georgia. I lived in Georgia for five years. Uh, I was teaching down there when I was a teacher. I'm not a teacher any, anymore. Um, and I also lived in New Jersey. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I, 
I've been all over the place. Not, uh, yeah, I've spent a lot of time out west, but like I am I'm, uh, an East Coast, East Coast girl. So. Uh, right on. <laughs> no offense or anything. Yeah, <laughs> right? no, none, none taken, none taken. <laughs> um, awesome. And so how did you, how and when did you first uh, get into running? Yeah, so I, uh, you know, a lot of people think that I started running as an adult, and I, that's actually not true. I, I played varsity sports in high school. I was a field hockey player and a lacrosse player. Mm. Um, lacrosse is actually my favorite sport ever. Um, and because okay. like, there's not a whole lot of like adult lacrosse leagues, um, I, I run. And I, the reason I run is because when I was playing those sports, I needed to get better at those sports. And so I decided that uh, because there was so much running, <laughs> I mean, and everything else is kind of secondary to the running, you know, the, the, the carrying of the, the cradling of the, the, the ball and the stick and the doing the, uh, the long drives and, and field hockey, you had to do it all running and you had to do it with a mouth guard and shin guards and, and all these things. And um, I had to get better at it. And so I, the first day after tryouts, after um, field hockey tryouts, what I did was uh, go and run the five loops of the field that we had had to run. And I was, we had had like almost three hours of practice, the, the tryout practice where we had to warm up and then we had to do a timed mile. And then we had to do like two and a half hours more practice, like doing like, they used to call them Indian dribbles. They, I don't know what they are called now. Um, and like suicides, those are line drills now. We had all those things in one, <laughs> in one session and I thought I was dying. Um, <clears throat> but the coach came up to me and said, you know, you're, you know, you're doing it, it's hard, but you're still here. Um, you know, we like that, we like to see it. And so I, I wanted that, I love that feedback. And so I wanted to be on the team. And so I uh, started running the next day and it was really hard uh, and painful. <laughs> Um, but I knew how to do it. And so I kept doing it. And, um, but every time I run, um, I, especially when I, when I smell freshly cut grass, I am brought back to that first day, uh, in that new school, um, running around the field. And it's just like, it is the most poignant memory that I have of running. And, uh, and it's, it's so important because that's, you know, I just, I wanted to get better at the sport. And then I ended up loving running. And so, and I still love it. Oh, that's awesome. It's great that, um, uh, cause I, you know, I, um, I think I'd read that you had um, started running like in high school and I was like, oh, like maybe you did like cross country or track and field, but it was a, it was a byproduct of the sports that you loved, which um, I think is, is something that's, I mean, especially at, at that age, right? That you're in that self-discovery and you're like, you get into it for this reason. And all of a sudden you fall in love with that as well. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, one thing that, that really uh, resonated with me is like you mentioned that um, getting the feedback of you're doing great, um, you know, you can tell kind of who you are as a person, right? You're, that you have this, this level of determination, which I think is, um, is <laughs> I mean, I think many of us are very envious of that level of mm. determination. That, uh, and I think that it plays out a lot um, when, you, when it comes to doing these, you know, distance marathons and ultra runs and everything like that. Um, so how, you know, how did, did, did running um, after, after practice turn into a passion for ultra running? When did that, that take place? <laughs> there were some steps in between. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> it wasn't like a, you know, a flicking a light switch, I'm sure. But, you know, how did that, how did that develop? Uh, well, cause it's funny. Cause I, I only, if I were to measure what I was doing back then, it would probably only like top two miles, maybe two and a half miles. Cause I don't know, we didn't have garments or Suntos or whatever. Uh, and I, you know, no one drove in my family. So I just, I had to kind of run by feel, you know, like, or, you know, run by time. Oh, I need to run for 45 minutes today or 20 minutes today. Cause group said to, and, um, and so, you know, that just grew into a love of, of how running made my body feel. You know, I've always been a slow runner, but, you know, I've always enjoyed the particular way in which it made my body feel. And, um, and then in college, I really wanted to play sports. I wanted to do field hockey and lacrosse, but I couldn't because I was 
in two schools at the same time. I was at Oberlin College uh, of Arts and Sciences and Oberlin Conservatory of Music. Um, and I wanted to play sports, but my they were like, no, <laughs> you're, you're doing two different degrees yeah. and uh, you don't have to, you need to be in the practice room. So I couldn't play sports, so I had to do something. And so wh what I did was I swam a lot. I um, rode, uh, not my own bike, I rode my friend's bikes. And, um, and then I, and I ran and we had a fitness trail around campus that I would do all the time. And uh, at a beautiful arboretum trail, uh, trail that, that I would do. And then, um, and then I just continued. I always went to the gym. I always had like a gym membership throughout my early adulthood. And I always explored places running like i would run for like a couple of months and then you know, bring it back <laughs> and not do anything and then i'd go out and yeah. run again um but my first uh i was working in a corporate job in corporate america um and uh i um i opened up the new york times new york times while i was supposed to be working <laughs> and, um and there was an advertisement for a running clinic and it was an eight week long running clinic that uh culminated with a 10k it was an avon mini marathon in new york city and so and it was free and i was like you know what let me try that 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 looks great i'm you know i'm always i'm always up for anything right and i you know i love trying new things i you know again i love running i was like oh this is i've never had a coach and I don't know really what to do so let me try this and I went through eight weeks of training and we ended up in our uh doing that 10k and then I was hooked on just looking at races yeah, um yeah. and we I would travel all around New York City doing all of the New York Roadrunner races and and seeing the same people over and over again even though it's such a big city right yeah and uh and one lady once was like hey are you gonna do uh, the marathon and I'm like no why can I do that and no <laughs> and this is 1999 and, and uh, like 1998 and 1999. I was like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> um, and then I, uh, I got married, had a baby in 2003, moved to Maryland. And that's when things kind of got a little hairy. And, you know, I, my health wasn't at, wasn't its greatest. And uh, I thought I was having a heart attack at one point. And, um, and that whole scenario prompted me to, um, to revisit health <laughs> yeah. and wellness. And I had, I happened to have a treadmill in my house because the cardiologist that I saw, even though I wasn't having, I didn't have a heart attack. He, he, you know, said that I, um, would need to change my lifestyle if I wanted to live to see my son grow up. So, I mean, that was all I needed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because I had a lot of inflammation in my body and, um, a lot of, uh, just a lot of other like health issues. My skin was awful. My teeth were awful. Um, and, uh, and it was like, I had a lot of, um, I guess cortisol or, you know, that's how my body responds to stress. And I was like much heavier than I am now. And, um, and so I made a decision to start running again, cause I had stopped for about three and a half years. And I got on a treadmill. It was awful. <laughs> yeah. It hurt. I wasn't wearing the right shoes because uh, I hadn't purchased running shoes in you know a couple of years. And yeah. uh, but I said, you know, this is all right. This is it. Here we go. And you know that turned into that was like I did a mile, maybe a mile and a half every other day, or sometimes every day. And, um, and that was what got me back into running regularly. Um, I said very quickly, like after three weeks, I said, well, I'm gonna need a goal. I'm gonna sign up for this local 5K, see where I am. I know it's not gonna be as great as it was <laughs> 10 <laughs> years ago, but I'm gonna try it anyway. Mm -hmm. And then I did that 5K and at the end of the 5K, I was like, I am not happy with this time <laughs> because 10 years ago, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, I, I, you know, that was just one way of kind of like one metric I was kind of measuring myself against, but it didn't matter because I was, I already felt better mm -hmm. than I had three weeks prior or four weeks prior. I already felt better. I'd started sleeping better and stuff. And so that turned into a summer of 5Ks and 10Ks, like, like, multiple times a week, uh, oh, wow. along with doing all of this other stuff. Hello. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, that turned into people noticing that I was doing this thing. Uh, hey, can we come run with you? I'm like, I'm slow. So you can do your own thing. I'm going to be in the back chilling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and we did races together. And then I started coaching a cross country program at my the high school that I was teaching at. And, you know, and then I started doing longer races. I did a half marathons and 
I did half marathons, multiple half marathons. And then a colleague of mine said, Hey, you know, you know, you're doing so many half marathons. Why don't you try a marathon? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like this again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and so I was like, that's an awful idea. How do I sign up? And yeah. so I signed up for my first marathon, Marine Corps Marathon 2011, and um, started my blog, Fat Girl Running, uh, just because I had been posting ad nauseum on Facebook. Here's what I did today. What did you do? <laughs> you <know? laughs> like, <laughs> I did two 5Ks today. Uh, and then I swam and then I played tennis. And then, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was like really obnoxious. And, uh, and so a friend of mine said, just, just do a blog. And so I did a blog and while I was training, I uh, fractured my ankle first week of training. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's great. And yeah. at a trail race. <laughs> oh, good uh, that I well that I went back and 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 got redemption uh, a couple years ago, and so uh, yeah and so like I started doing marathons because I mm-hmm. love them I, like I, I I didn't I love them for the the fact that I had to push myself mentally so much like I mm-hmm. like at, you know and, and physically you know after my first uh, eighteen miler in training I. Um, I was nine miles in because it was I did an out and back and and I was like at the side of a trail like kind of stunned because I was like what am I doing <laughs> yeah. why am I doing this everything hurts everything ch- is chafed uh, I ran out of water and so this guy he was my trail angel he he runs by sees me standing at the side of the trail like like shocked runs back and he's like hey what's going on uh, I'm like hey <laughs> and he's like it's New Jersey you know you can't talk to everybody and um and then he says uh are you all right I'm like um I don't know <laughs> he's like well how many uh, what uh, how many miles you doing I was like 18 he's like what mile is this nine he's like you gotta run back to your car I'm like yeah he's like yeah because you gotta you gotta run back to your car yeah. right so you better get going do you have a gel you hear some water you know mm. okay get going and he's like by the way you know join my group i'm ralph's runners on facebook we'll see you out there and uh and that was it like i took a gel and finished the my first 18 miler and i was like i was hooked i was hooked i was like this is this is it i, I love this i am in a lot of pain right now <laughs> yeah. it was the same kind of thing that i had felt when i had finished that first field hockey thing like i was in a lot of pain but i felt so alive you know yeah and so just engaged with everything and and i just felt everything and so um that was i was like well if i can do 18 miles i can i can do a marathon fine um and it it was still painful to finish that marathon because i was still like uh i I had you know been released and i was training and uh you know from the ankle injury but uh i uh at the end like when the marines put the the metal over your your head it's just such a cathartic moment and you know that that also hooked me uh and i was like so i was i wasn't disappointed with my time i was like well you know i I, clearly i have to do this again so i can do better (laughs) and so i kept doing that and then i did my first uh trail marathon in 2012 um with one of the race series uh it's called new jersey trail series that i've done uh many times and i would volunteered for many times and um my first trail marathon at the end the race director puts the medal on me doesn't like doesn't even smile or anything <laughs> he's like 50k next year oh man oh like for real like congratulations yeah Good job. <laughs> none of that yeah. 50k yeah. next year okay bye <laughs> and so but that that really cemented uh in me the need to like keep pushing myself mm-hmm. so i as soon as registration opened i signed up and in the training while i was training for that 50k that's when i got hooked. i was like oh yeah this is it i gotta find trails to run on i gotta you know i just gotta like do all these new things um and it was that was 2013 and uh and then i just started looking for ultras to do it never looked <laughs> back from there huh that's uh yeah that's that's funny i mean that 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 external motivation um i think is um it's, it's funny right when you think you don't necessarily like you know you can do things um and then when somebody else is like no you can you got this like no problem it's like oh well then what can i say now right like, <laughs> right if you think so <laughs> yeah yeah it's like oh okay uh, yeah you're like yeah i got this yeah okay, definitely right, right. Yeah, i got this <laughs> so for uh, for, I, for any of us runners, I mean, I, I 
I try to run up, you know, and I, I get to, you know, I'm, I can definitely relate to this point. Like you mentioned, like when you're at the nine mile mark and mm-hmm. you're like halfway, you know, you exactly what you have ahead of you. Um, and sometimes <laughs> you really, you know, you have these doubts um, about whether or not you can complete it or even like, you know, continue running. Um, what, what tips do you have to, to like mentally kind of overcome and push yourself past those boundaries that mm-hmm. you kind those limits that you set for yourself? Sure. Um, so one of the things that I do now, and this is just because of from experience, um, is to prepare mentally. Like we all prepare physically. Like we can do our miles, we do our tempo runs, we do our fart legs, we do this, we do that, our long runs. Um, but you know, a lot of times, a lot of times we're not really thinking about what we need to be thinking about (laughs) while we're out there and like what we're going to do when we have, when we bunk and we know we're going to bunk because we've done that (laughs) hopefully in in practice. Right. Uh, What are we going to do? Like, what are we going to say to ourselves? What uh, strategies are we going to employ to get ourselves to where we need to be? Um, And so for me, like, I know, you know, if I'm doing a 50 K, um, I know around mile 15, miles 15 to 18, that's going to suck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I might have a playlist or, uh, or a podcast that I'm listening to or a song. It's like, oh, I'm going to sing this song. <laughs> Usually it's Luther Vandross. Um, mm-hmm. Just to kind of get my mind off of how much pain I'm in or how yeah. bored I am <laughs> or, or how much I hate the world <laughs> or like, I, you know, or the fact that I'm last, you know, like I have to deal with like, I'm last. I know intellectually, I know I'm fine. Like, I know it's okay to be last, but like emotionally, I'm like, I'm last. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not not a worthy human being, you know, like there are all these things going um, uh, through your mind, but you know, to know that you will have those thoughts uh, and to know what, like how you're going to answer yourself when you have those questions about whether you're going to be able to finish or, you know, like that nine miler, I knew I had to get back to my car. No one was going to carry me. I'm heavy. <laughs> no one's going to carry me. Right. Um, you know, and it was a trail. So there weren't a lot of people out there except for Ralph. <laughs> yeah. And, um, so I had to get back. So they, I didn't have a choice. So, um, you know, but, but I did have a choice in the way that I reacted to the situation. Right. Um, now I know like, oh, do I need to eat? Do I need to have some hydration? Uh, do I have any hot spots? Do I have, um, you know, am I chafing in some nether region? <laughs> like, I need to take care of that right now. Is there an aid station nearby? Like if you're like at a race, um, um, you know, so, or like I give myself an assignment. Um, you know, when I was a teacher, I would plan my lesson plans. I would um, also like, I, would, I used to be a music teacher as well. So I would like arrange music in my head mm-hmm. on particularly difficult um, routes um, or, you know, parts of a course. So yeah, I think um, there are a lot of things that you can employ, you know, having a mantra, um, you know, even if it's like, we're going to get the damn job done, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you know, giving yourself tough love is, is also very uh, helpful to some people. Yeah, great, great, solid advice. I'm definitely gonna, gonna try to put that into a uh, into use next time I'm hitting that spot. Um, I think Luther Vandross. I think I'm gonna give that one a shot too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I feel. Yeah, I totally feel like it just take me outer body experience if I'm running. I'm, I got some Luther going, so uh, I appreciate that tip for sure. Um, so what? Um, what? Uh, you had mentioned that you. Um, you had, you were doing some running and then you started really getting into like the trail running. Um, what is it that you uh, enjoy about the trail running that, um, over like road running? And, um, and do you prefer like the, the trail races over like, uh, like a, you know, trail marathon versus just the, you know, a in town marathon? Well, trails are better. <laughs> <laughs> they just are. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. <laughs> um, you know what? I, I I will, I'll tell you about the first trail race that I did. Uh, it was in New York, uh, in the Bronx. And I lived across the street from this park called Van Cortland Park. And it was, uh, I didn't realize that it had actual trails in the park. And it's a huge, huge park. Just it's slightly smaller than Central Park is. But most of it is wooded. And so I would go out and kind of explore and, you know, and get scared and freaked out. 
Um, and then uh, they had this race there. Uh, I didn't know that it was a trail race. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought it was, we were going to be racing around uh, that they had a big one and a half mile loop. And I was like, okay, cool. Like I can do a couple of loops. And so as soon as the gun goes off, you know, actually it wasn't a gun because it was a trail race. Right? It, was, it was just like one, two, three, go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> then everyone runs into the park, uh, into the trails. Uh, onto the trails. And I was like, oh, wait, oh, <laughs> I was, what is this? <laughs> yeah. But so I did it and uh, it was two loops, two 5k loops. And um, I face planted uh, right in the middle of uh, one of the first loop. Uh, and then uh, it was so fun. I was like, you know, I didn't get hurt. I just, I tripped over a root and, and I popped right back up. I was like, oh my God, what, what just happened? And then I just kept running. It was like an automatic thing. And I face planted in exactly the same place on the second loop. And I was like, this is so fun. I know that sounds crazy, but it was because it was like an adventure right across the street from where I lived. And that sold me. Like I, I've always loved hiking. I've, I've loved mountains. I've loved, you know, even as a, uh, you know, a person that grew, was born and raised in a city, we had lots of opportunities through our school to do camping trips and to do hiking and stuff like that. And I, and I had always loved that. So uh, I prefer to be in that environment, like, which is why I moved to Vermont. Um, because I, even though I live in the capital city, I am, you know, five minutes away from the nearest trail, like walking. And, um, you know, our, our town park is the woods. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I love it. And it's, you know, there's this, you know, all that science behind being uh, in green spaces that like I really benefit from. Mm -hmm. um, I need to be by trees. I need to be in mountains. You know, also like need to train in, on trails and in, you know, on mountains. And so, yeah. yeah. So I, I love it. I prefer it to road races. It's also better for your body. Um, mm -hmm. If, you know, you're moving in all different planes when you're trail running um, and you, you utilize more muscles. And so it's, you know, it's, yeah. It's just better for your body. But that's not to say that I don't love road running. I also love road running. But if I could only do one kind of running for the rest of my life, it would be trail running. Yeah. yeah. That would, as it sounds like you're set up pretty well to do that in Vermont as of right yeah. now. So <laughs> good things there. Um, so you mentioned that, that, uh, that your first trail race um, and through the park, you were not expecting it. Did you, were you, so were you wearing um, like, I assume you were wearing like road running shoes um, as opposed to like trail runners. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, cause I didn't know it was a, right. yeah. I didn't even know trail running existed. Mm. You know, I knew yeah. we could hike, but I hadn't ever thought, Oh, let me run on this trail. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had never seen anybody do it until that day. And I was like, Whoa, like, but there's rocks. Yeah. <laughs> branches and things. <laughs> Stuff you can face plant over. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, working with Meryl, I assume now you have some solid, uh, some trail runners. I have a couple. Yeah, just a few, right? <laughs> uh, what, what are, what are some, what are your go-to to, um, uh, like Meryl trail runners and, um, and how do you go about selecting a shoe for a particular race? Um, well, uh, there are a couple of shoes. Well, my, my absolute favorite shoe is the Agility um, Peak Flex 3. Um, that's just the shoe that I go to over and over and over again. But now uh, my next favorite shoe, and I, I did not uh, really dig the previous version of the shoe. It's the Antora. The Antora 2 is fantastic. Um, and it's really designed for, for women anyway. They, they you know, they... Um, have they have a like specific foam um that is designed to like hit the pressure points um for women and uh you know based on our q angle and stuff and so um they have been amazing and so there's like a um not a high top version there's like the low version and then like the mid and it like kind of looks like a hiking shoe and you can use it as a hiking shoe as well um and like and gives you a little bit more stability in your ankles um so um, so yeah, there are th those two shoes. And then, um, the one shoe that has been discontinued was the Cirrus and that was my sky running shoe. Oh, love that shoe. Like bright orange, like really obnoxious, but just like, just, just was really, uh, quick and light. Um, but there's another shoe that I, um, that I'm growing in my love for, and that's the MTL, um, what's it like sky? Sky fire, sky, 
Mm. That's another like, but it's super like super rugged and like the lugs are pretty deep. Um, so there's this mountain called um, Hunger Mountain around me and uh, around by where I live. And that is the shoe that I wear because it's so technical, like the rocks and branches and streams, and <laughs> you name it, <laughs> it's on yeah. this trail. And so uh, those are my, so those are my four uh, top choices or five. Nice. Yeah, that's five. That's awesome. Do, and, do oh, and as far yourself, as, yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, as far as like uh, picking the shoe that you wear, like you really got to look at the, your, first of all, the what kind of foot you have and what, what your gait is and all that and uh, what you're planning on doing with the shoe, where you're planning on running, what the terrain is, you know, is it wet and muddy? Is it really, really rocky? Uh, um, the, all of the above in the Northeast. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, are you going to be climbing a lot? Do you need a lot of like grip in the lugs? Like those kinds of things. Do you need, um, that Arctic, I think that, you know, Merrill has, Merrill has this Arctic grip stuff, like that I hope that they put on trail running shoes and not just their boots <clears throat> because it's all ice in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, like, so you have to think of all of those things. Like you uh, Sure, you could wear just one kind of shoe. Don't wear your road shoes, though. Like, don't do that. Don't yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah, you made that mistake for, for, yes. for all of us. You suffered for all of us there. Huh? Mm -hmm. um, great. Awesome. Have you, um, you mentioned before that you, you, know, you, you swim, uh, that you bike. Um, have you ever uh, done a triathlon or do you have any? Oh, my God. The triathlon. Are you a triathlete? No, no, I'm, I'm, ba I'm barely a runner. <laughs> because <laughs> my athletes keep coming at me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm, I have not accepted any money to try to persuade you, so. Super aggressive. Anyway, so, um, all type A's. Um, so, uh, I, I've, I've done a whole lot of indoor tries. I haven't done uh, an, uh, one that is outdoors yet. Uh, but I just, I just have been reengaged with the, uh, bike, um, uh, mm -hmm. actually just since I've been injured. Um, and I was mad about getting on the bike. I was really mad. I was like, I don't want to ride a bike. I'm a runner. <laughs> like, <you know? laughs> Am I even exercising? <laughs> this yeah. going, going yeah. and, and, um, and, but then I fell in love with it. You know, I had, I'd hired a coach to, I was like, teach me everything you know about the bike. And ride, also ride with me because I'm scared. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, and that, that's actually been one of the greatest gifts of this whole pandemic, right? It's like, now I have time. I can, I can learn a new sport. I can be a beginner. I don't, you know, I can relish in feeling like an idiot, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not knowing how to mount a bike correctly, you know, that sort of thing. And so um, it's been really great. And I, um, I haven't been swimming recently, like as I'm in Vermont, mm -hmm. um, all the pools are still kind of, Closed frozen. and weird and all that, and, yeah. and also frozen. Yeah, but I will start that again because it's you know, I don't know if I'm gonna do a real try. Maybe maybe one, maybe a sprint, and then and then I'll be done. But maybe yeah. I'll fall in love with it. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go over to the dark side. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, I'm trying to. Yeah. Good, good, good. Um, Got a bunch of questions here, and like we've touched on a lot of them. Um, and like as I mentioned, we'll get to to all participants' questions in, in actually just a few more minutes. Um, I just I, I really do want to touch on because um, I think you do a lot for uh, body image positivity, uh, particularly in running. Um, your mm -hmm. book, a beautiful work in progress. Um, you know what do do you feel there are um, how do you, what do you see as like the main like body image issues in like the running community? Um, do you think that they're, it's, they're getting better? Um, and, and how can we kind of make those better? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think the whole issue of uh, body image, I don't, I actually have, have grown out of saying body positivity because it doesn't really mean anything anymore, <laughs> but a uh, positive body image uh, is, mm -hmm. is actually the thing that I, that I refer to when I'm talking about anything uh, dealing uh, with a person's perception of who they are and like of, of what their body looks like. Um, you know, for a very long time and still till today, uh, there is this perception that a certain type of person, a, a person with a certain type of body is an athlete or does athletic things. Mm -hmm. uh, and when we all know that's not true, it's not true. Um, like even like in the late nineties, when I would, had just 
started doing this clinic, there were all kinds of bodies. There were, and, and our, our coaches, where we had an Olympic um, shot put thrower or whatever, and like who could run like nobody's business. And she was huge. Like, I was like, I'm scared of you. <laughs> <laughs> and she was paired with me. She was like, let's go. <laughs> you know? And I was like, but, but that was my role model for that particular thing. And I was like, well, if she, you know, she's an Olympian, you know, and she's uh, not, you know, shaped like me, but, but she's, you know, not thin. Uh, she's not tall, she, she, but she's really strong and she's just a phenomenal athlete. And that's what I had to look up to. And um, so this, this idea that there's one body type that uh, does athletics is, you know, is a farce. Uh, Cause that's because it's just simply not true. If you think about all of the sports that are done around the world, all types of people participate in sports. Mm -hmm. um, does physics play a game, a role? Absolutely. You know, can you, you, you're probably going to be faster if you're thinner and a little bit more muscular and that's, that's fine, but that's not, that's not all that athletics is. It's not all that running is, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, humans evolved into runners, like, so that we could run down deer. <laughs> and, I mean, if you think of, you know, like born to run, uh, and, and, you know, uh, I'm thinking of Silvino, uh, Kubesari in that, in that community uh, who I've had the opportunity to meet, like he used to hunt deer on foot. Right. So yeah. like running, <laughs> you know, so yeah. that's what we're evolved to do. And so you, and, and humans come in all different shapes and sizes. And so you can't say that, you know, uh, this kind of human doesn't belong in the sport. Like the sport isn't yours. <laughs> yeah. It's humanity sport. Yeah, right. Seriously. So, um, so I, I think we're getting better. We see, we're seeing more types of people represented in media and, you know, app, app, you know, obviously in social media, like we, because people create their own things, right. right. Uh, their own sorts of uh, curated uh, imagery. And so, um, and, and I have control over what I see. So, uh, so I think there are lots of different ways to, to see different, differing types of bodies and, and differing types of athletics, et cetera. Um, and then um, I, I think that the industry is doing a better job in terms of the advertising and marketing um, because they have to, like it's a bottom line. Yeah. You know, they, people like me, we have money. <laughs> we want to spend yeah. it, we want to look good. We want to be able to perform and the clothes that we have, we want them mm -hmm. to last and we're willing to pay money. So like, I think all of that comes together to, you know, make the industry a little bit more aware of, of the, the vast, um, the vastness of humanity. Yeah, definitely. And I, t I totally agree. I think we're, um, you know, we're, I think we're seeing it's, uh, some progress there as well. And I think, uh, I feel like there's a lot more opportunities nowadays, you know, and just for, for like your, your 5Ks and your 10Ks and um, yeah. it's a lot more access, which I think mm -hmm. is, is good. Um, but um, so we've got um, like a whole bunch of questions from, from the audience. Like, I mean, I've got more, but I feel like, um, you know, I don't, don't want to, to exclude our, uh, our great audience here. Um, so why don't we get into a, a, a few of these? Um, so the first one I've got, um, I've got a few from Gene here. First one is just um, on your journey to running ultra distances, what was your big, biggest surprise in self-discovery? Um, the biggest surprise for me was that I could just go for so long, you know, just mm. for hours and hours and hours um, without it hurting my body so much that I, that I had to stop. Like I could just go, like I could go for six hours. Oh, I need to go on an eight hour run today. <laughs> like, yeah. Nobody ever says that to, yeah. well, some people, like, you know, Scott Jurek says that. <laughs> I'm going to go on an eight hour run today. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a short run for I'm going to try to FKT the AT yeah. today. Yeah. yeah. Today. Um, but, um, you know, like it, it, it just like surprised me that my body was able to do that. Uh, and then I would like turn around two days later and go back out and run. Maybe not for that long, but, but, but that my body was able to recover or that even though I was sore, I was still able to move. So that was, that was really, really huge. Uh, and that, that factors into my training, uh, my most recent training, you know, like uh, when I'm training for a trans Rockies or something like that, where it's six days straight, <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. first day is 21 miles, the second day is 14, third day is 23, you know, like, and you don't think you're like, oh my God, that's so much, oh my God. Can't do that. But yes, you can. Yes, you can. And the body is like this incredible, incredible machine. That's awesome. That's great. It's uh, incredibly motivating. Mm -hmm. um, makes me want to go out and run right now. <laughs> uh, 
So here's a kind of a, a two-parter. Um, what's been your favorite running event that you've participated in thus far? And do you have like a, a bucket list um, run that you're, you really want to do? Well, uh, I just mentioned this, but Trans Rockies six-day stage race in Colorado starts in um, Buena Vista, uh, which that's an awful pr pronunciation, but that's what they say. <laughs> Buena Vista, um, and ends in Beaver Creek, 120 miles, 20,000 feet of vert. Uh, it's like, they call it running camp for grownups and, or summer camp for grownups. And it's uh, your job, your only job is to run at those 120 miles. And like, they set up your tents for you. And, uh, and there's all this like camaraderie, there's, uh, there's good food. There's just, it's just a really, really great event. And even if you don't finish, like I did the first time I did it, uh, it's still a good time. You learn so much about yourself and, uh, and those like the sweeps, cause I was, I came in last when I did finish 2018, those, they're like my best friends. Yeah. <laughs> cause we spent so much time together. <laughs> That's great. Um, oh, and as far as bucket list, um, yeah. I, you know, I don't really have a huge bucket list. I'm just, I'm super excited. I've been invited to UTMB next year. I'm not doing a big one. Because no. <laughs> uh, I actually, I, I had surgery five weeks ago, and I'm like not going to be able to do anything over, probably over a, a marathon distance uh, for a while, which is fine. Um, and, um, but they have a fun run, the fun run. Uh, just typically when you think of a fun run, it's like 5K or 10K, yeah. <laughs> 5K walk. <laughs> yeah. um, this is, um, the, it's, a, it's 40K, <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, which is just, you know, just, uh, just short of a marathon. And, um, but it's 7,500 feet of vert. And this is the one that's for the volunteers, <laughs> the uh, townspeople, <laughs> not the real one. Yeah. So I'm gonna do that. That's my big, big goal for next year. And it's in Chamonix and you know, Mont Blanc. And I it I I cannot wait. I'm like so stoked. Please, please, y'all, please <laughs> let's get this thing going, get it over so we can travel again. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. wear, wear your mask for me here. Come please, on. Please, please, yeah. please, so I can go to Chamonix, okay? Yeah. <laughs> take good pictures. Um that's great. I mean, I, yeah, you don't you want to talk about steep, right? Like Chamonix is like the oh place, steepest place in the world. <laughs> but beautiful, incredibly beautiful. <laughs> um, so I got a question here from Cynthia. She says, hi, Marina. Uh, how have you stayed motivated during the pandemic and during your injury recovery? Uh, thank you for your question, Cynthia. <laughs> um, I wonder if this is a Cynthia Allen. I know. <laughs> Um, I, I have, uh, it's been very difficult because I definitely have had uh, moments of despair, <laughs> not being able to run because that is how I get my, my fix, right? My, uh, you know, all the dopamine receptors and the, you know, and, and endorphins. That's really how it happens for me. And so I've had to learn this new thing. I've had to re-engage with the bicycle. I've had to do a lot of hiking and I much rather be moving a little faster because <laughs> I'm not much faster than my hike pace. <laughs> so, um, you know, but getting outside is very important. You know, that, you know, that, that sunlight, um, the uh, engage, like just being in nature is, is very important for me. So that's how I have been able to like keep some hope. <laughs> um, you know, in addition to all the stuff that's happening in the world, I think, um, you know, just movement in general movement in general like uh once my gym was open uh you know we could have two people in there at a time <laughs> you know i made sure to sign up and 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 you know meet with my personal trainer and just and just to make sure that i was working on something maybe it wasn't at the same level that i had been working before but i was at least doing something and actually now when i got on the bike for the first time after surgery two days ago my coach was like well you haven't really lost any fitness and i'm like yes yeah. Are you nice to me? Like, are you telling me the truth? Like, are you just saying? <laughs> so, uh, score. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, I just kept moving, uh, even though I sometimes I really didn't want to because I was like, I felt hopeless and was like, I can't run, damn it. Um, but I would go out even like for a mile uh, on a hike or I'd ride the bike. Um, and like, just, you know, be grateful that I, number one, I can move my body. Number two, I'm alive. Yeah. Number three, I have been gifted this time to recover, to rehab, to 
do other things, to spend time with my son, um, who would rather not spend time with me. <laughs> <laughs> Like he's 17. And, um, you know, so there are all these th different things and I had to like reconfigure my, like I lost a lot of work. I lost like 75% of my, my work is I do speaking engagements. Yeah. And like, <laughs> but then they all came back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I like, kept myself busy and I definitely stopped watching TV um, because like if I was going to be mentally healthy uh, and physically healthy, I just had to make sure that I was moving and not, you know, filling myself with up with um anxiety cool excellent and actually uh, this is a great follow-up question from brandon here um wh what advice would you tell someone who struggles with consistency in their run training um get a coach <laughs> <laughs> you know and i i i was i was prided myself on some like on being a person that didn't, didn't need a coach because i would write my own plans and i would stick to them you know mm -hmm. um but i think when you have a coach, uh, you can work with somebody online. Um, I, I work with a coach online, but, you know, we sometimes I will fly out to Idaho and I'll, you know, spend a week with him uh, and his and his wife. But um, I, it takes the onus off of me to plan run, my run, my runs and my training. So all I have to do is to actually do it. And then I have somebody checking in on me, you know, not as accountability, like, hi, how you doing? How was your training? Um, I hate the term accountability partners because really you're only accountable to yourself, right? Uh -huh. uh, it's because you make that decision to go or to not. And so, you know, when you, but when you engage somebody else to help you out, like it's asking for help. Hey, I need help with my consistency. I asked, I hired a coach for the, the bike because, you know, I was like, I need help because I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and also like, what should I, what should I be doing? Oh, can we ride together? And it's this whole like relationship and it's, and it's awesome. So like you, and there are all different types of coaches. Um, or I mean, if you are into the whole accountability partner thing, getting somebody to do it with you, then if that's how you learn and, and that's how you get things done, um, then do that. But there, there, you can always ask for help. You don't ever really have to do it alone. Definitely. And just well, my sense too, just to, um, if you don't want to go the coach route, like um, mm -hmm. there are plenty of running meetups around, right? And that's like mm -hmm. finding, finding those groups and those mm -hmm. running partners is, it can be huge, right? Um, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Strava did that whole uh, research uh, thing, the research project that left two years ago, I, I guess, maybe, um, that I was a part of. Um, and so, and one of the, like, and they, they broke up runners into five categories. And uh, the top three categories were all people who saw the psychosocial benefits of running in groups and doing races. Right. And it's hard because there are no races, but you can still be in community with other people. You can be in community virtually. You can you can do socially distanced runs out on the trail or do your little small pod where you can actually be a little closer. Um, you can do those things that you, or maybe not on a trail, maybe on a road or uh, on a dirt road or something like that. There are different di different ways to be together with people um, that are safe, um, but that to give you that psychosocial benefit of of you know, just being out there running together. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, I mean, yeah, totally agree with that. I mean, you think you, you notice that too, like you mentioned, like in, in a race, like if you train by yourself and all of a sudden you're in a race and you just, you, you're just, you're flying, right? You're like, oh yeah. man, I got this whole extra gear. I didn't realize. That's mentality. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Um, <laughs> Okay, so what I'm going to do right now for anyone that's still here, if anyone wants to ask questions directly, I'm going to allow everyone to, um, to unmute themselves. Um, so um, everyone can, let's see. All right, everyone should, you should be able to do it um, now if you, if you want to. Uh, ask me a question directly. You are more than welcome to. Um, just unmute yourself and ask. Um, anybody out there? Oh, while, while people work up the nerve, um, I, I'll ask a question for my, myself. Um, <laughs> I feel like um, it seems like you have, it strikes me that you just enjoy like the act of running and the races and you, um, I feel like I've, I've never seen like a, a, a runner that's, that's gotten as much joy um, out of the races as you do. And I think so many people get caught up in, you know, getting their PRs and, um, and, you know, placing better and everything like that. So, so what do you do to, to, to really focus and, and enjoy what you're mm. doing. But what tips do you have for that? Um, well, 
Well, I think just kind of rejoicing in the fact that you're, the body is an incredible machine, like number one, mm -hmm. uh, that you're able to do this. I always, I always carry like my family with me when I, just in my heart when I am uh, running and all the people that like have mobility issues and that, that aren't able to do the cool things that I do, you know, like I, I run for myself, but I also run for them, you know, like, so to, to take it out of my own head and out of my own pain and out of my own, whatever, mm -hmm. um, that stuff isn't important. What's important is for me anyway, this is my personal opinion, you know, it's important that like I can show people that, you know, we can do these like incredible things, you know, we can do hard things, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, but, um, and we can be good human beings and we can have joy. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, running for the most part, not all the time gives me joy. Sometimes, sometimes it's just not joyful. <laughs> like, yeah. so, like, but I, anytime I see a camera, I'm going to smile because it just kind of brings me out of my, whatever I was brooding about, like this sucks. I hate this course. <laughs> I don't know why I keep doing this one. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but as soon as there's some, somebody passes by and says, I, I like kind of wake up out of myself. And so like, uh, it's nice to see other people. And I'll, I know I've been looking for the camera. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <I'm like a laughs> <premise. laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Sometimes you see those pictures, right? You get like, you're like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, that's a good one. I'll, 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 I'll find that one. The other ones you can keep, right? Okay. Um, anyone out there that wanna, wanna I, don't, yep. I just want to say thank you. You're my favorite runner, and this is so cool just to <laughs> hear you talk. So. Oh, thank I, you, Anna. <laughs> it's so cool. So I don't have a question because I've been like, this is too cool the entire time. <laughs> Thank you. Now my face hurts from smiling so much. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Do I have a favorite trail? Uh, uh, a trail that I've run in the past that I can't wait to get back to and run again. Ooh, like there's so many. There's so many. Um, there. Oh yes, there is a trail. Uh, I read. There's a video on my Instagram of this. It's around a volcanic, the top of a volcanic crater in the Azores. It's about five miles around, maybe, maybe a little bit more than that. And it's, you know, it's rugged and it is stunning. And, you know, throughout the day, it'll be like foggy and windy and then the clouds will just come in and, and you know, and, and wrap, you, wrap you up in, I don't even know what the word is, um, <laughs> shroud you. <laughs> <laughs> and their cloudiness um and uh and then it like the sun will beam through and then everything is clear and green and it is just oh man so i'm going back there hopefully in may may seems like it's a long time away but it's not <laughs> uh, and that's called the caldera and uh in the azores and it is just Oh, phenomenal and like it's a crater right so you can see down into the crater but there's another little volcano that uh erupted you know years and years and years well hundreds and thousands of years whatever <laughs> the time is but there's a like a little mini volcano in there and there's there are hikes that go down there to that volcano it's it's super cool so it's beautiful it's rugged it's that's what i like you know it's, it's not easy but the it's it's so you know we were talking about earlier before we uh, went live, you know, there, it's one of those sort of awe inducing places where you don't really have the words to explain what your mind and heart is experiencing because it's so <laughs> awesome. A mini volcano too. That sounds yeah. very cool. Uh, uh, this one, this person wants to remain private and I'll, I'll just paraphrase here. Uh, but the, they, um, so she, uh, she Looks like she's she says she's 60. Um, she's kind of living a more of a sedentary lifestyle. She used to run like 30 years ago, um, and, and recently got the bug to run to start jogging and maybe even do a marathon. Um, her question is, what am I thinking? Um, let's go <laughs> be a little more productive and say, you know, like what um, for someone that used to run and maybe they just they've they're, they've been out of that life for a while. Um, what do you recommend in terms of like um, how, how do you get what, what kind of plan to get started and then work your way up? What would you suggest for that? Yeah, you know what? That's a great question. I'm a big believer in just kind of starting, starting slow, you know, uh, if it's, 
if it's running around your block, if you have blocks, I <laughs> know uh, not everyone does. Um, if it's, you know, if you have a treadmill at home or something like that, we just start slow. You know, a lot of us will, you know, will hearken back to our former selves. Mm -hmm. And like I did <laughs> many <laughs> times, I used to be able to do a 5K and blah, 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 blah. Um, and now that's not, that's not who I am anymore. That's not where my body is anymore. And I have to be okay with that. And so uh, if, if I, you know, if you do a Jeff Galloway sort of entry into uh, re-entry into running, you know, that's, that's one way. Or just kind of I, what I do with my very, very few coaching clients that I have. And I like, I do a more intuitive thing where, you know, run until you don't feel like running anymore. Take a break, walk, and then run again. <laughs> yeah. uh, do that a couple of times. How do you feel? How does your heart feel? How does your, how does your body feel? What's going on? Do you think you can do more? Are you done for today? You know, and it doesn't have to be like that for the entire time we're coaching together. You know, this is just easing you back into the routine uh, in, a, in a way that doesn't seem overwhelming. You know, like we overwhelm ourselves all the time. Well, you know, I got to hit this pace. No, you don't. You don't. What For what? There's no there are no rules. <laughs> Um, um, and, you know, and then you just have to kind of be with yourself and, and, and follow your body's, uh, you, what your body wants to do and what your body needs to do and don't fight it. All right. So, um, start slow, give yourself some grace, you know, have goals. That's cool. But make sure the goals are you know, smart goals, you know? <laughs> specific, measurable, <laughs> attainable yeah. <laughs> that's what that's so important it's all that's all like really cliche but I think having goals that are attainable um so that you don't feel like crap if you don't you know if you've set a goal that's like way up here uh well i want to run a marathon by next month that no and, you, and if you haven't run for a couple of years no i mean some people are able to do that but then uh that's not <laughs> necessarily a thing that they're able to do again after <laughs> <laughs> not sustainable. And so, um, you know, you want to do something that's sustainable and something that um, that's not going to be overwhelming for your body or your spirit. Um, and then go out there and do it again. Maybe go longer the next time. Maybe, maybe you don't walk as much. Maybe you don't walk at all next time. And if walking is something that you want to do, then that's okay. There are no rules. <laughs> the only rules are the ones that we impose on ourselves. Cool. That's great advice. That's Excellent advice. Um, let's see, do we have anybody else here that wants to ask Mirna a question before we call it night? It's just about 6.30 here. Um, boy, it looks like, looks like everyone probably got the, the answers they wanted to. So um, Mirna, thank you so much for giving us some of your time. Um, anybody else out there, check her out on Instagram, The Mirnovator. Mm -hmm. uh, good and easy to remember. Also check out her <laughs> blog. Uh, is it uh, fat girl running um check out her book which is a beautiful work in progress um i think it's it might be on sale on kindle right now i'm not sure uh you can also check me out check out my patreon but anyway that anyway that's something different um <laughs> but uh yeah so the book the book is i actually um suggest that if you are if you love Audible, then you should listen to it on Audible because I performed it in all of my different accents. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic! I, I, I gotta say, I, you got a you got a great voice for uh, for an audiobook. Not you know, not everyone can say. In fact, very few people can say that. But I feel like you've got that. So um, yeah. that'd be great. So thank you so much for your time. This has been very inspiring, so informational. Um, and thank you. Yep. Myrna, yeah, you answered my question. I appreciate you. You're, I love your energy. You're very inspiring to me. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. All right. So we'll be back next week. We've got okay. Patagonia Provisions. They're going to be uh, teaching us, uh, showing us some recipes with their sustainable um, uh, foods from, uh, from that line. Um, and Myrna, if you, once this whole thing slips, uh, you know, you Come, come on out to the Bay Area, do a run. We'll have you in store and, uh, and all, you know, all your fans here can, can meet you and we can get inspired all over again. Yeah, yeah? anytime, we out. Right on, all right. All right. Have okay. a great night. Everybody else, we'll see you next week. All right, bye everybody. Thank you again, you're so cool. <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> all right, bye y'all. See ya.